What's going on guys? It's Johnny. Today we're going to do something very fun, very special, you guys. We're going to be setting up, and, and you guys haven't seen this for me, this is going to be new for me. So we're going to be setting up a very special tank today, and uh, setting it up in a very special place. So uh, let's get to it. Let me, let me show you guys what we're setting up here. We're going to be setting up a 60 gallon tank. It's going to be, as you can probably tell from the title of it, it's going to be an African cichlid tank. Now, uh, African cichlids are a wonderful uh, species of fish uh, that you can enjoy uh, years from. I mean, they, they start small, they get, you know, a lot of them get pretty big, but we'll get a different um, a cross section of a bunch of different species and we'll show you as they progress. But first, you know, uh, let's set, set this thing up and uh, let's get started from there. But let me show you the, uh, the room that we're going to put this in and show you what, why we're putting it here. And what we're doing with it. So let me give you a little perspective of the room and what we're doing here. So this is the living room as you walk in. Uh, people will be sitting here in the couches and stuff obviously. There's the uh, little nook. There's the door to the backyard. Uh, and as you're sitting here on the couch right you can you know you watch TV or there's a nice little well set in area right there. It looks like it's specially made for an aquarium. Obviously, it's it may it, it's probably not. Maybe a, a nice inside the wall bookshelf would be good there or whatever. But for me, that's a perfect spot for an aquarium. So that's where we're going to put it. So I got this uh, aquarium here from the PetSmart deal. It has a nice stand right here, a uh, nice black stand. It looks pretty classy. You know, if you if it's in the living room, it's got to look nice. We'll cover all those cords up and everything. Oh, right here, let me give you a quick update. Check this out. This is the aquaponic setup, right? The aquaponic setup. That's a quick update. It is doing really well. The fish, the beta, is providing nutrients to the plants. And that peace lily, check it this out. Boom, it's actually flowering up. So you know that setup is doing quite well right so fish powered going to the plants and that's the whole aquaponics thing but i was supposed to give an update on that i might have or not but there's a good update it's doing fantastic plants doing great fish doing great everything anyways back to this tank so what we're going to set this 60 gallon came from PetSmart. got a real good deal you know PetSmart sells some good good uh quality tanks at a at a really good price when you catch them on sale you can catch them 100 or two you know a couple hundred bucks off whatever can't remember exactly what this was, but it was 60. It was like maybe uh, two or 300 bucks, something like that. Got the stand. It comes with the lights. And obviously understand that the lights are probably the most weakest lights you'll ever see. But that's the, uh, the top to where the lights sit. And I'll go ahead and uh, put that up at the end. But first we're gonna set this up. We're gonna put gravel and everything in there. So understanding what you want to put in there is probably the first thing you want to figure out for yourself. All right, so uh, understanding what kind of fish you're going to get, uh, the, I guess that's the first step is to, when, when you're setting up an aquarium, uh, keep in mind what kind of fish you want. So in this particular case, African cichlids, they want a high pH, they want hard water, they want uh, lots of minerals, they want a high temperature, and live plants are pretty much not advisable since they just tear after them and, and, and probably in my experience they just end up wiping out all your live plants because they can just go and shovel in a whole you know mouthful of gravel and spit it out because that's what they do I mean they and it's cool and I'll show it to you and everything but let's go ahead and set this tank up first first step at a time right let's go ahead and set this tank up and let's get started all right step number one clean the tank seriously so you can either I mean I wouldn't like you know, once you move it to where you're gonna move it, I'd, I'd leave it. But if you had a friend or something and y'all wanted to wash out, you know, you could take it outside and, or inside, whatever, and just spray with the water hose or something and just rinse it out. But the easy way, the way I like to do it, is spray some stuff on it. Easy, safe and easy from API. It's safe. I mean, if you leave it in there, for the fish, the fish don't get hurt or nothing. So I spray some on the front, inside, wipe it with some paper towel, and you're ready. Okay, that's step number one. And I'll leave all these links to all these products that I'm using in the description below. And yes, there's a lot of products you're going to spend money in the fish tank uh, hobby, <laughs> in the aquarium hobby. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of just the way it is, man. 
Anyways, I'll, I'll leave a link. You know, I'm not sponsored by any of these guys. I'll just uh, tell you what I use myself, okay? So, first of all, I think that the best substrate, aka gravel, what kind of uh, gravel you want to use, you want the landscape's going to be, I'm going to use a lot of crushed coral because, as I said at the beginning, African cichlids, especially from Lake Malawi, what I plan on getting is the Mbunas, and I'll explain. And I'll show you those as I buy them, right? I mean, uh, when I buy them, not as I buy them, but um, they like a high pH, high calcium, high magnesium, you know, just a hard water type thing. So crushed coral is the perfect substrate for that. And I, I'm going to take a look. I used to do straight crushed coral, so I'm going to put straight crushed coral. I'm going to take a look and see what that looks like. Mixed in with some big, huge rocks, right? Uh, African cichlids, in general, like rocks. So I'm gonna put some nice, pretty, good-looking, I've got some good-looking rocks here. I'll show y'all here in a second. But once I set the, the, uh, the gravel down, if I need more, I'll go to the store and buy some more. I was thinking about mixing in regular gravel like I do with my other fish tanks that you guys are so used to. But we'll see what happens. Right now, I don't have a mixture. All I've got is the crushed coral, so we'll see what happens. And I used to do it in the past, and. I'll tell you what, that's the, one of the best substrates for African cichlids. You never have to worry about any pH problems ever again. Guaranteed. Or you get your money back. Whatever, I don't know if you get your money back or not. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and put some crushed coral in there, some substrate, and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so a close look at that crushed, crushed coral is what it really is, is just little pieces as, as it really says it's pieces of coral that's been crushed now don't worry we don't go with a bulldozer and grab a bunch of coral and start crushing it uh, from what I understand is the coral that's already dead that's washed up onto shore they grind that up so uh, whatever you want to believe but I believe that it's done in a uh, good way crushed coral also is a good source of calcium what it is is a calcium carbonate, basically. It's just a bunch of minerals, a good calcium, good carbonate to uh, buffer the water. It buffers the water and it uh, really uh, stabilizes the pH of your water so the buffering capacity is increased and you won't have to worry about uh, pH crashes. Whenever I use this as a substrate, you don't have to worry about it at all. Uh, so if you have soft water or even if you have hard water, uh, you can, I mean, I would maybe recommend uh, some sort of crushed coral in any, every tank maybe when I go that far. I don't know if I go that far. It's definitely a great addition to a fish tank if you have any problems with, with uh, stabilizing pH. So, But uh, we're going to go ahead and put this in there and see what it looks like. Alright, I got a base layer of crushed coral. Honestly, the African cichlids will need more, uh, either gravel mixed, or more crushed coral. They preferably, if you look straight down, right, um, they they do like to dig a lot. So I would say probably inch and a half to two inches above the line of coral and or gravel and or rocks. But we'll go ahead and take a look at what kind of rocks we're going to put in here. I mean, we got a good selection, nice selection of rocks here. Uh, lava rocks always a good one. Uh, slate, some, some uh, rainbow rock, um, this is a cool looking rock here. Uh, also, let's take a look out here and see what we've, we've got near the, near the pond out here, near the mini pond. Don't get too excited, it's just a little tub pond kind of. So we got some holy rock. Yeah, holy rock is always good. That's a big piece though, I'll tell you what, that's for a big tank right there. Slate. Here's some slate. I think slate might be a good, uh, good alternative here. Good option, I guess. Got some of this jade rock. It's not real jade, but it's cool looking. We can make a mountain of that. I'm gonna get this piece right here. Oh no, look, this piece right here. This piece looks good. Look at that. I might make a mountain or something. Yeah, it's got some good holes, and they love that. And this also buffers the water too. So, holy rock, also known as limestone. We get a couple pieces of this rock here. Some sandstone, maybe. And some of this here, yeah. So we'll take those four pieces. Might come back, 
get some more maybe, but that's good for now. All right, so going out there a couple different times, here's the selection that we're going to start off with a couple of lava rocks there, just a couple of cool looking river stones, nice little uh, holy, holy rock there. You can buy these all at your local aquarium shop. And I'll go ahead and stack them up after we fill it up with a little bit of water. Yeah, so we don't want to actually put the um, the rocks into the tank until we fill, I would say at least a quarter, but I usually do half of water so that if uh, it's easy, it's easier just to place the rocks when there's water in it. I don't know how the physics works on that. I'm just a fish guy, but uh, it's just how it works. So that's what we're going to do. Stay tuned. Now there's lots of different ways to fill up your fish tank full of water, but the easiest, most convenient way is buckets. No, just kidding, not buckets. I hate buckets, carrying those things, especially when you're old like me. But uh, the most easiest way is to get you a, a hose system, uh, commonly known as uh, the Python and or there's the Aquion version, which I'm having here, which I have here, which is the cheaper version. Than the python which works just as fine it connects to the the faucet and i do a whole video i'll put a link somewhere up here or down uh, and uh, down in the link in the description below on how to change water without using buckets it explains all this stuff but this is definitely the best way to fill up your fish tank without whew, breaking your back you remember these things they used to be for you old timers they used to use these for water beds and stuff huh y'all remember water beds put a link put a like hit a like or leave me a comment that says waterbed remember. I remember waterbeds in the comments below if you can remember what a waterbed is and how comfortable they were. Woo -hoo -hoo. All right, so while this thing is filling up, uh, we're gonna take a look at the filter that we're gonna put on here. We're gonna put on here uh, AquaClear 50. Yes, that is too small. It will be fine for the, the babies that I'm gonna put in here to uh, to start off the tank. This is a used filter. So once the water gets a little bit above that line, that's when I'll stop filling up the water. But I'm definitely going to get another one. Probably, let's see, what do I have? I've got a... I've got a was a 20 that's not even close enough to be powerful enough for the 60 60 gallon so probably need some two of these 50s or a big old 110 whatever but uh, I'm gonna start off and the reason why I would re prefer to have two 50s is that you can clean one and then the other one will still keep going but whatever your thing is is fine your situation I'm gonna start off with that 50 there I'm gonna take this 20 I'm gonna do a little switcheroo let me do a little switcheroo, okay? How about this? I'm gonna come down here into the other fish tank here. Let's turn this thing on. One ready. Yeah, I just thought about this, okay? Just thought about this. This 29 gallon here is powered by a AquaClear 50, right? As you can see right there. So I... I am going to, and this is controversial, but I'm going to take this AquaClear 20 since it's not as powerful, but it should be good enough for this 29. I'm going to do the switcheroo. I'm going to take that AquaClear 50 and put it over there. So basically what we're going to end up with is two AquaClear 50s, one on this side, one on that side. And the benefit is one will already be cycled. How cool will that be? One will already be cycled, so it will benefit this fish tank because it already has built up bacteria in there so let's go ahead and fill this up and uh and then put the rocks in all right so i got the basic uh, rock set up here i did a little bit of uh, lava rock right here and make a little bit of circle where they can swim through and stuff and i've got a little bit of uh, holy rock on top of the uh, variegated rock and i've got some just throw a little bit together let me know what you guys think uh, this is just the beginning but check it out all right, so I'm gonna do the old switcheroo on this filter here. I'm gonna switch out this 20 for this 50. Uh, you guys might think, uh, hey man, ain't you gonna disturb the balance of the uh, bacteria? Yeah, probably, but you know what? I think that with all the plants, look at that, and all the beneficial bacteria 
that this gravel bed provides that has not been disturbed in a long time. I think that the, the tank will get cloudy for about a day or two and then it will clear up and everything will be fine. So let's see if I'm correct or if I just put this tank into an ammonia crash. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below. All right, so a major thing to take in con into consideration is that you would probably want one of these filter screens onto your filter intake, which is that tube that goes down, right? On all these, because even if you have small fish, they can get sucked up, but mo more importantly, is for these Af African cichlids, they're gonna be dirty. And all the poo and stuff, I don't want to get sucked up all the way into the filter. I want it to get kind of diffused, but anyways, for many, many reasons, I'll leave a link in, uh, in the description below for these, is you would, do definitely want to have filter screens because you don't want to change the filter media, you know, your, your filters and stuff all the time on your filters. So it's, it's more of a, uh, you, it, it's more of a save time for you kind of thing. You know, use this so you don't have to change your filters, but once every three months, it, you know, versus if you want to just once a month. Right, so which one would you want to do? You decide. Anyway, I'll put this back on. All right, so one thing that we hadn't talked about yet is the actual heater, right? Do you need a heater? I probably don't. I keep my thermostat set around 75. You know, it seems to be okay for normal fish, but let me tell you something. African cichlids, okay? African cichlids like it warm. They like it warm, so what I would suggest if you don't have your house at 78 or above, you get your heater, five watts per gallon. The 60 gallon tank, five watts per gallon. Leave a comment below. How many watts do I need? That's right, 300 watt. 300 watt heater is the answer. I bet you didn't know you needed math to do aquarium stuff. See, stay in school, don't be a fool. Anyway, we're gonna put this in there and we're gonna set it at, an in African cichlids in general. Now, <clears throat> some like it warmer, some like it cooler, but what I'm talking about usually when I say African cichlids, okay, so everyone's gonna say, oh, this guy's wrong. What I'm talking about and what I'm thinking about is Lake Malawi in Bunas and probably Lake Tanganyika. also. They like very high, very high temperatures, very high pH, as far as I remember, uh, but we'll find out, so. I'm gonna install this to about 82 degrees. How about that, huh? Oh, you can't do that. Yes, you can. African cichlids like, hot, like it hot. 82, here we go. And I would recommend this particular heater. I'll leave a link in the description below or somewhere up here. I did a video on why I like this particular heater. But in short, it's because it actually shows me what the temperature is, bam, without a thermometer. All right, so what comes with the kit is the, uh, the tops, like I uh, alluded to previously. But what really comes with the tops, tops, which is the glass tops here that you can see. Okay, there's two of those, one for each side, right? One for each side here, I'll lay down these, one for each side, as well as... The backsplash, I don't know if they call it backsplash anymore, but these go on the back to make sure that evaporation is at a minimum or that jumping fish don't jump. And you definitely need, I, w I would normally not use these with like uh, community fish, but with this particular tank, the African cichlids, they are very strong fish, so they can jump. They have a tendency to be able to uh, propel, propel themselves very long distances. You know, one time I was sitting here and I was talking and uh, there's a, a fish that just jumped up and hit me in the head. Not really, okay. But they can jump though, they can jump, okay. So uh, make sure you use this, this, this part here. And, there should be two more things here. Okay, two more things, of course, they, they got the handles. So I'll put all this stuff together, put it on the top, and we'll take a look and see what it looks like. All right, so we put on the tops here. They're just uh, standard standard tops, and centered the 
the little handles as close as we possibly could, which is fine. I mean, that's just normal. If, it, if it's a little over to the left or right, who cares? I mean, the handles are good. So, tops look good. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the lights that they sent us. And I expect these lights to be very poor, to be honest with you. And that's why I bought... And that's why I bought these... Oof. What was I talking about? Oh. oh, hey guys, I bought these awesome Aquanet lights. They're good for the aquarium. So I've always been uh, a big fan of these, but we'll set up the lights that came with it first, and I'll show you what these Aquanet lights look like afterwards. And uh, there definitely will be a link in the description below. And I really do like these lights, but uh, seriously, we'll put these on first. All right, guys, well, check this out. Look at this with the LED lights nicely plugged in. This is very interesting because I've totally underestimated the power of these LED lights. I mean, it looks pretty good. And understanding the fact that African cichlids, I did not uh, plan on growing plants anyway. I think this would be uh, plenty sufficient light for those Af African cichlids. Leave me a comment and see what you think. I mean, this is perfect because I thought it would be very poor lighting as far as I was accustomed to, but uh, this looks good. So actually, we can save this bad boy for another four foot tank. There you go, for the lighting. A major thing that African cichlids need and crave is oxygenation of the water. They're fast moving fish, they move a lot, they, they jump around, and what they really need is well oxygenated water. So what I would recommend would be a uh, air pump of whatever type you like. I'll leave a link to this Whisper air pump in the description below, as well as some uh, little clamps and hooks to be able to hook on the, uh, the tube to go in. I'll go ahead and set this up and show you how it's done. All right, so now we have the tank filled up. The temperature, as you can see, is a balmy 79 degrees. Perfect temperature for good old warm loving African cichlids. So the most important things, obviously, we put tap water in here. We've got to dechlorinate it, of course. So what I would recommend is using the Seachem uh, Prime Dechlorinator, I will definitely leave a link in the description below or somewhere up here, but this is a super concentrated and if you've ever seen some of my older videos uh, recommending some other products, I like those too. Just use whatever you want to use, as it's probably fine. Uh, but this one is, it costs more per bottle, but it's super concentrated to where you use less and that's where you save the money. So. For 50 gallons, 50, 50 gallons, one cap does 50 gallons. I mean, for new tanks. So that's awesome. So I'm gonna do a cap and a half for a 60 and everything will be fine. All right guys, so now we have the tank filled up, almost ready to go for our new fish. And we're, I'm, I'm itching to get out to the fish store and get some brand new African cichlids. But the secret, let me tell you guys, the secret why you come to this channel and not any other channel, the secret to the African cichlid survival is, guess what, you're not going to even believe, marine salt. I know, I know, I know, no one ever talks about this. Why in the world would you put marine salt into a freshwater tank? Guess what? African cichlids, like I've been hinting this whole time, high mineral content, high pH, high alkalinity, they love it, they, they love it high. So um, what the marine salt does for you, does for them, is it, in, it introduces not only uh, the salt, but the other minerals like the trace minerals, the, the different type of things that uh, African cichlids, and African cichlids, they're different from most other tropical fish, okay? They love the pH to be super high. I mean like above eight, you know, 8.3, 8.2. They love it super high. So 
this this gives a, a good buffering capacity and it not only this particular brand but any kind of of marine salt right um any, any brand doesn't matter this has the electrolytes that the african cichlids like uh living in uh, lake victoria lake malawi uh lake tanganyika uh they need really they need a lot of uh uh, different things that normally you wouldn't norm, normal community fish wouldn't particularly need so anyway having said all that so we're gonna set this aquarium up we've uh, dechlorinated it everything is ready I think we'll put a background on it later make it look pretty everything later but uh, to condition it for the fish we're about to go get some fish and I'm excited we're going to put probably I would say one tablespoon uh, per 10 gallons of water. So five tablespoons, six tablespoons for a 60 gallon, five tablespoons for 50, etc., etc. So about six tablespoons, yeah, about six tablespoons for the 60 gallon tank here. Yeah. And you'll see that it, it so there's about, there, that's about six tablespoons right there. And they love it. They absolutely love it. You're, you, you're thinking it's weird. But I have lived through decades of, of doing this. And this is like the stuff that you're not going to see on the regular channels, right? Because they just regurgitate information. This is real deal here. So we're going to go and... Um, yeah, we're going to actually go and get some fish. How about that? What do you think? All right, so we've got some really nice looking specimens here. I don't know if you can see them or anything but we've got a good amount of blues and whites and yellows one of these guys we got that he doesn't have a tail if i don't know if you can see him or not but uh, we got him and we're gonna try to nurse him back to health okay that guy up there but uh these guys are looking real pretty and we'll check back with them but we'll go ahead and let these loose they've been floating for a while We're just going to plop the drop. So we got eight of these guys, check them out, boom, huh? How cool are they? Oh, nice looking erratus there. All nice looking ambunas, which are hump heads, kinda. There's that one in the far back right there without the tail that we're gonna nurse him back to health. Yep, that guy right there, yep, he's gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna bring him back. Okay, so check out his tail, we're gonna bring him back. But all these other guys here, they're gonna enjoy this Six gallon tank here. All right guys, so there you have it. Uh, adding the new African cichlids to the 60 gallon tank. We'll put the background on it later. But there's the adding of the fish. Leave uh, comments in the description below on any questions you might have or any comments. And let me know how, how you like these. These are pretty high yellows, blues, yellow blacks, those bumblebee type uh, patterns. Definitely like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification for all these uh, videos. And uh, hit me up on Instagram at the Tropical Fish Guide. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it, guys. Peace out.